They're the most awarded and highly lauded group in a cappella music history, including 10 Grammy Awards, and are basically an American musical treasure. I'm Steve Hauk, and welcome to Voice of America's Music Alley Spotlight. Formed in 1980 at Oakwood University in Alabama, they became Take Six in 1987 and never looked back. Since then, they've performed for four sitting U.S. presidents and continue to elate audiences worldwide. We'll talk to our very special guests in just a moment, but first, some beautiful music from the one and only Take Six. One, two, three. Uh. So everybody just clap your Come hands. On. Come on and just clap your hands. Take Six Come in the building. On. Clap your hands. If Come you with me, just clap your hands and let me hear you say, Come on. Time and I would blame somebody else. Hell, Sorry, this happened hand. to me. Everybody, everybody. Nothing ever changed until I turned and asked myself. I said, Self, what's wrong with me? What's your deal? I can't Gosh. help it. Oh, no. I can't fight it. Wanna hide it? That seems to be me. I remember what the good book said. Really live, you got to be dead. So I asked for help for God himself, and I got the victory. Come on, Come on everybody. We just get started. Uh-huh. Rocking the party. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got the victory. Got the victory. Come on, everybody. Come on. We just in the glory. Uh-huh. Rocking the party. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got the victory. Oh, oh. oh. I knew it all. Always teach somebody else. Like the perfect one was me, myself, and I. When it fell apart, I was standing all by myself, and I feel Question why? I can't help it, and I can't fight it. Don't wanna hide it. That seems to be me. I remember what the good book said. Really live, it got to be dead. So I asked for help, died myself, and I got the victory. Process of learning where God is the answer. Love is the key. Oh, the prize is waiting. And it's waiting for you to cross the finish line. Claim the thing to be. Come on, come on. Quit us getting started. Rocking the party. We got the victory. We got the victory. Bitch in the glory. Rocking the party. privilege to have the one of the top a cappella groups of all time if not the top uh, take six guys thanks, thanks so much for being thank here you. It's it's unbelievable thank honor you. you know why don't we start at the beginning for a second bought at Oakwood College it was Oakwood College back yes. then it changed the university the ambassadors right the uh, whoa. whoa hey wow. there's some research nice. for that. thanks nice. um, you started this thing why what, what prompted you to start a music group back in the day very simple 
that particular college has a really rich heritage of a cappella groups, mm -hmm. uh, specifically quartets. Right. So when I was a freshman, I started a quartet of three other freshman guys. We were the Gentlemen's Estates Quartet, because right. that was the name of the freshman housing. And uh, true story, we used to rehearse in a large bathroom, because everybody knows you sound great in the bathroom. Rehearsing one day, Mark Kibble comes into the bathroom, adds a fifth part, <laughs> and uh, starts arranging for the group. Invites himself in. <laughs> we add another member, and you know, pretty much the rest is history. What was the what was the mindset to to how the, the group would evolve and how the sounds would evolve? Because we, when we heard you guys perform a little earlier, you heard R and B, you heard jazz, you heard a little bit of everything. What was the evolution of the music, and how did it how did it become what it is today? Well, you know, I think because we all actually play instruments, you know, to some form or fashion. Um, everybody plays keyboards. Everybody, some pl guys play trombone and guitar and, and things like that. So we wanted to have a group that covered all the bases of all the instrumentation. So that was the original intent from having six people and having an a cappella group. From there, there was this love of jazz and everything else you mentioned, from R&B to pop mm -hmm. to gospel. So we tried to marry all of those elements into everything we did. Pretty much as a, as a creator, uh, uh, whatever you have inside of you, whatever you listen to, whatever you love is gonna eventually come out. Over the years, what, you know, the, the reputation of Take Six has just been fabulous. I mean, four sitting presidents you've played for, um, across the board collaborations with some of the greats. What set Take Six apart? There's been a lot of you know, stellar a cappella groups that have come and gone, but what sets you apart? We're st still together. <laughs> <laughs> that to do it. We do our best. We try to represent excellence every time we step up to the mic. And uh, a love, a re mutual respect of each other and a love of God. We mm -hmm. work hard, and I think that just shows over time that you, you put the work in and have a relationship that people can feel. Over time, you've had a, an element of gospel, and it's been a big part of you. You've won, some, won a Grammy or two for your gospel work. Has that gospel feel continued to pervade through Take Six? Has it waned a little bit as time goes by? It's probably always in your heart. Absolutely. But has it, has it been part of the music since the beginning? Yeah, it's the pack. Just think of it, the package. It's always inside there. The wrapping changes, but the package always contains gospel. That's what we're about, what, what inspires us. That's what got us going and what keeps us pushing collaborated with some incredible people. I mean, the list goes on between Ray and, and Whitney Houston and, and Al Jarreau and Stevie, which was, mm -hmm. I've seen that clip and it gives, brings tears to your eyes. What was probably one of the most, a couple of the most memorable collaborations in a nutshell that you've done over, the, over time that you just, you look back and still get a little bit of a chill up the spine? Well, I mean, those that you mentioned, um, each, each relationship that we have in the business uh, brings something special in and of itself. Um, Quincy Jones is like a, it's like a father to us. Stevie's like a big brother to us. Uh, we've been privileged, like you said, to pretty much work with just about everybody. Um, I know we would love to work with Aretha Franklin. Mm. Uh, that would be a good thing. But you know, we just Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. <laughs> Wow. Especially the way he said that. You're right. And, to, and, and, he, and he still brings it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Between the, the seven of you, that would be some beautiful sounds. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, we're going to have some more great conversation with these guys in Take Six in just a minute. From their brand new record from 2016 called Believe, this is Reset. <laughs> Hard not living like a huge mistake. No. 
snap you can clap you just have to do it on beat that's all that's that's, that's all we ask when the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we see no i won't Stand by. 
Stand by me. 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 had a big, big moment in the history of Take Six recently when you were ambassadors for the United States to go over to Cuba as the first American vocal group since the reestablishment of diplomatic relations between them. There was a quote I wanted to read that said, in some form, Take Six helped to advance U.S. Diplomi di diplomacy and interests in ways that our formal process could not. Whoa. Why, why do you think people felt like that when you were over there? Give us a little bit of a nutshell of what that experience was like in Cuba to, to play for the people over there and, and feel that. You know, it seemed one of the first things that they wanted to reconnect was culture and music. And so it was part of one of, one of the decisions that led to us coming there. And it's interesting because as soon as we got there, they took us to, to see the art that was on the wall. They t had us meet a whole bunch of different groups that we didn't know at some point had listened to some parts of our music. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to hear these groups and these artists um, to hear them do their thing and then to let them know, you know, I, I, I listened to this, this project, your first project, I was able to hear one or two songs and it just inspired me to do something and it was just so humbling mm -hmm. to do that and I could see why they wanted to connect on that level before they started opening up all the different other levels that they wanted to connect on. Mm -hmm. It seems the Rolling Stones were there around the time you were there, give or take a few weeks. <laughs> so there's, a, there's a couple big acts yeah. going right in, one after the other. Well, you play over Europe. In fact, you're just about to go on a European tour, as far as we know. Um, the, la you know the language um, is a different barrier occasionally overseas. It just doesn't seem to matter to you. What do those, what do those uh, European audiences feel like to you when you're over there? Your music is a powerful thing. Uh, back to what, kind of what Joy was saying, I've often felt like if the UN just had a big cookout, and everybody tastes each other's food and listen to their music and just have a big picnic, there'd be no more wars. <laughs> People are the same all over the world. They love family, they love, they love music, they love uh, togetherness and to be happy. And I think the power of music and the power and the message um, unites people. So if there's a, a speaking barrier, it's quickly overcome when you add the layer of music and, and heart and, 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 and soul. What is the essence of a cappella music? I mean, we, we heard you sing earlier. Um, we know what the kind of the, the genres that are crossed across um, the music, but what is the essence of when you guys are up there and it's just your voices speaking? What is, what is the essence of a cappella to you? A cappella is very special because it is devoid of all the exterior coatings. It is uh, bare <laughs> musical soul. You can share nothing more than the purity of who you are, the purity of your voice and your soul. And that's what we experience when we sing. That's what people get when they, uh, when they hear us. And I'll also add this, that, that when you are trying to impart the essence of love, it comes from the soul. And you get that most directly when it comes straight out of somebody's voice. So there you go. Um, that, that's why a cappella is so special for us. Yeah, you can really feel that. You nailed it. Um, you have a new record. Um, it's number, what number record is this, 11? It depends on who you ask. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've heard 16, we've heard 13, 14. 14. <laughs> what was the thought process behind doing this record? You guys have been doing this for a while. Um, so was there a, let's do something different, let's do what, what we know works? What was the kind of the thought process behind Believe? Well, in the collaboration uh, with our record company, SRG, ILS Universal, um, we wanted to do something that uh, was accessible, number one, something that uh, with our business partner, the record label, they felt that comfortable selling. And so we sat down with um, uh, Ross Finelli, the producer who produced a, a CD with us, and we came up with the collection of songs there on Believe. Give us a cross-section of the songs on the new record. Are there a lot? Originals, covers, kind of a, a regular take six kind of cross section, or what, how does covers. it break down a little yeah, they're, bit? They're originals uh, that we all, again, this is one of the um, usually our process, uh, creative process, uh, is one guy or two guys get together and we're, we don't live in the same city, so we uh, write and we present things to the group. This time we were all together in one room uh, working together and putting the CD together, so. It's a good cross-section of, um, like I said, they're, they're all um, 
uh, songs that we wrote together. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some acapella songs on there as well to some keep up that tradition, well. some pop songs. We, we pretty much covered the gamut. You, you talk about six people in a group. I'm in a couple of bands. I've been for about 10 or 15 years, and it, it seems that the, mo the more people in the band, the more issues that are going on in, mm -hmm. within the band. In, 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 a, in, a, in a minute, how do you guys keep this, this cohesion with six guys, different personalities over all these years? I think like Vin said, I mean, part of, we're, we're a family. And not only are we a family, we're brothers, we love each other, we respect each other, but we have a mission, and that is to spread the love of God. And so uh, it's, it's bigger than the six of us together. And so it's our calling. Amazing talking to Take Six. We'll be right back again with them to close out. But right now, let's go to a great old song, a, a classic one called Oh Mary. Let's do that. One, two, three. Check out. Dum -dum. No. We need you. Don't you worry. Don't worry no more. Now don't you worry. Don't worry. Hey, how I'm sick, Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep up. Tell the mother not to mourn. Thank you. 
Mary understands. <laughs> tell Martha. Tell Martha not to move. Thank you so much. Here we go now. 